dear good afternoon or good morning or rather i can say as because i am recording this one right now so i can't say that one was the right time But first of all i tender my sincere thanks to st teresa's institute of education from kathmandu mumbai specifically madam shopnala for inviting me for this webinar regarding education exchange perspective opportunities and challenges now this webinar is one kind of thing because here some of the guests or some of the resource persons along with them in the rather in the journey for taking up the issues in the academic field and myself being one faculty in the department of life and information science in the university of bangalore so i am dr shatosh ghosh from university of north bengal west bengal india uh, is uh, you can say that when when it is in the jilling district in sri lanka and I tender my sincerest thanks to all of you who are here at the same time those who are listening to us and specifically from the remote people uh, also remote parts and audiences or the experts who are listening to all these things so in my presentation what i was uh, told to deliver it that was nothing but like a research matrix <clears throat> and you know that one research matrix is rather uh, a kind of thing that we are right now talking about more although it's uh, there for a long while as started from <clears throat> the statistical bibliography the very concept by alan fisher and then Uh, subsequently, we have an art. There is a bibliometry, the metrics, the biometrics. Then you see the scientometrics or the rational invention like informatics and scientometrics. So, practically speaking, almost all the times we were actually trying to measure the academic endeavor of the researchers, academic endeavor of the persons in academics, and we tried to. measure the integrity of individuals in the academic career academic domain and at the same time some of the questions that arise out of this thing that is uh, are all those metrics that's already been involved are sufficient to capture the uh, intellectual intuitions or intellectual the kind of which is of the tacit knowledge we do have Are these things uh, very much capable of uh, taking the snapshot of it? So this paradoxical betweenness in academic endeavors and research metrics. This is paradoxical in what sense? Because you see, when we are talking about one academician, but uh, it's not that almost all the times one academician is busy with writing or writers or he is recording his own knowledge. and is recording the knowledge he is interpreting because this interpretation goes in tacit mind or rather the tacit this tacit many times may not reflect in the recorded knowledge and that's for why when we are talking about the matrix which is nothing but a kind of measurement a kind of quantification and specifically you see this quantitative values may not be measured by any kind of uh, Tools right now we do have, although we are actually trying hard to harness different types of um, applications for uh, identification of the tests or the identification of the contributions of those academic persons in the research area. So that is where the paradox is lying. Paradox is lying in there. It is easy that one teacher. Is it that one faculty? Is it that one person in the academics only contributes to written document, or rather, he is or she is 
busy and pain of promoting our user our own ideas then like this you see one particular problem is there specifically in our field specifically in like general information science we will have one problem using like information science the so-called specialization in that sense uh, I didn't come actually in earlier times so what is happening right now right now people are talking about this digital library right now people are talking about data mining right now people are talking about the data curation all these things the computer the nitty gritty of computers everything but it necessarily does mean that we have specialization because if you see the core of library and information science still the core of library science is lying on classification, cataloging and the traditional services along with that one supplementary things are the usage of computing in library and information science. So in that way we can say properly that is in library and information science so for specialization in that sense is not there and the subject is so dynamic in nature each and every time that is rather being shifted many times the psychology is playing a big role many times the management is playing a big role right now the computing it is also actually playing a big role as for example we invited NLP we invited artificial intelligence expert system in our domain and the other problem is that whenever individuals are rather creating their intellectual product or the products of their own intellect or rather they are putting their implicit to the explicit one here comes the problem that is if you see the different literature of like information so you see that one people are rather contributing more on the diverse nature diverse nature of subject and they hardly are they, they are hardly writing on a specific topic or like that so here what is happening one individual is writing on the different subject so he is not having any specialization on that field so you cannot count that one that is one individual is having near about 10 to 20 papers on a specific thing or specific topic or specific micro subject micro topic so this kind of a kind of stray approach it is rather going in like that one that is whatever is coming we are going through it and we are rather giving our inputs or rather we are giving our explanations or experiences we are trying to explain that one in our own time so it's not like that physics chemistry botany where the micro concepts are there that much more prominent and each and every researcher or rather person is contributing more researches or more um, recorded knowledge on that particular topic so hence in our perspective this matrix is rather uh, you can say that one that is yes matrix are there but uh, first not only in our survey for the domains where the specificity is not still identified in that sense in that particular subjects this has uh, is already remained this is already remained as a paradox so in such cases what we can do so in that perspective uh, i will uh, starting with my calculation that is the paradoxical between this in academic endeavors and such metrics first of all i want to um, say that one normally that one of these particular presentations are long presentation I mean, more than 33 of slides uh, you might be in travel while you are casting that one or might not be might be I'm uh, presuming that one so it's not like that but uh, hopefully you will find uh, some things it's not right and very new that is what you can say that was uh, old wine in a new bottle so I am presenting that one, but actually my concern is that one. So right now you see implicit came up with some idea that is your intellect should be measured uh, through the recorded knowledge and at the same time and those who are the working librarians, those who are the working professionals, those who are uh, the faculties of the department, each and every free time they have to show the authority that is they have that are much more dynamic and dynamic in what sense it's not the dynamic that they are dynamic they are catching the that their dynamism is rather portrayed in the explicit nature of 
Parthia, Amritya Sharma, like that. So in this perspective, so we are starting with that one. So now see what we are. So in this presentation, we are going to start with the core issues. And what are the core issues? So the core issues are, uh, you see the very uh, concept of public or, public or perish and the stakeholders for this kind of measurement. The existing bunch of metrics, already we have different kinds of metrics starting from uh, this impact factor and all other things. And then we got that one that is alternative metrics, <coughs> that is a new kind of measurement and where this paradox of intuitiveness and measurement is involved. And uh, what are the key deliverables? That is what this particular presentation wants to say. Those are actually the uh, key deliverables. And lastly, I try to focus on that one, that is or the one core issue I try to address. That is the identity. That is how one can increase their identity in the academic domain, academic field. So this is what, uh, in brief, that one, all these things, so what are the core issues, really whatever is mentioned here, is not actually uh, told in a sequential way. Rather you can say that well, it is much more, rather a kind of approach, that is um, uh, something like uh, whatever is coming and within that, with, with that one, what thread is required. So practically speaking, that thread will go along with that particular issue. It's not like that, this is a kind of content page and one after the other that will come. So we are starting with that one, that is the first one, uh, that is publish on page. So, as you see, that is publish on page. This particular one, people were saying that it was a long brain, this was the, um, actually saying like that. If you are one academician, and if you are an academician, and if you want to stay in your domain, you have to publish your internet. Well, this is rather, you can say that was an aphorism and this is where the pressure to publish, I'm telling you here, this highlighting things that pressure the academic work in order to succeed in an academic category. And this is where the pressure to publish has been cited as a cause for poor work being submitted to academic journal and that is what I am trying to say regarding this paradox I told and about what the topic of my discussion. Uh, that is the title of my discussion. You see, this pressure of publish, what is that? That is, you know, in a particular field, everyone right now, they are uh, going for this one that is publish, publishing. Because if you are one library or if you are one faculty in any place, so if you want to uh, get promoted or rather if you want to go for the advanced level work or if you want to join in the higher post, uh, you have to submit your API and where the API for research activities, a lot of things are there, the impact factor journals, journals without impact factor, PRG. And at the same time, books, and very recently, these electronic things came, that is the electronic resources, the e-modules, or rather, what are the different types of MOOCs contents you already developed. All these things came very recently. But actual trust area was there on the publication of that one, that is the resource. And ultimately, what happened, everyone was started publishing that one, and some kind of journals, and because of this proliferation of internet and ICT technologies, this ICT and internet, and everyone was rather started a business like predatory journals also came to the market. They were charging the uh, fees from the authors and saying that our, our journal is rather one impact factor and peer review journals. This thing came. Everyone is rather going for that one. Now, suddenly, see the UGC or rather the parent body came up with one solution like that. That is they have one uh, enlisted journals right now the enlisted journals are rather being so this then once the enlisted journal was there like now we have that one that is uh, 
check and balance is there from where you have to see that whether these journals are already been enlisted by MGC or not. So obviously you see those ones of the time or rather ones who published their journal articles in different such type of journals and right now those journals are not in that list. Now, now they are rather in a vacuum. Their intellectual integrity has already been questioned. It's not like that all those articles and everything was there that is bad. But at the same time, you cannot claim that one. All those things were good too. And that is what the problem here. We are rather right now. We are struggling with that one. That is the poor word and everyone without any kind of showing their core, showing their heart and mind together in the discipline, in the, in the article or in the recorded knowledge. They are just going for publication. And this is the first thing that we have the harsh consequences on that one. And see this one, first thing is that the salami slicing. You know that one, what is happening, salami slicing, it's rather I suppose one work, uh, but the researcher or rather the person or the author is not writing the whole thing in a particular paper. He is rather making it sliced or he is slicing it. That is, he is having that attitude of making more than one paper from those um, information. Specifically, we are seeing this one from the researchers. Uh, researchers actually if they do not want to write the whole thing in single paper. So from the research itself, they are making two or three or four papers. So this is what this is known as the salami slicing. So the more paper will be there, more they will be seated, and more their presence will be failed or presence will be noticed. And that's why right here comes the very concept of salami slicing. And then we have the multiplication of authorship. And many times you see that one, so whenever we heard the very term that is little science, big science by Derek de Sola Price, and from that one, once up many times, the research was the solo research, and then research as considered as one well, the uh, team research, or rather the relay research, multiple people, or rather a group research, that thing came. But right now, what we are seeing that one, it's uh, some kind of thing, it's obviously for Whenever a team is working specifically in case of uh, in one you say, biological experiment or physical experiment or the chemical experiment where one team is there and they are actually writing their results uh, with the help of one article. So everyone is the author. So it's not a big thing. But you will see that in our discipline, one fellow is writing one article on digital vector, but many times you see that one, the authors are more than three, four, five, and many of the seminar papers we have seen that one. So one paper, who is right now, the, who is actually in the first paper, who is the prime author or the chief author, in the second paper he is becoming the second author or third author, and many times I have seen that one that is in many papers, more than five or six authors are there. And collaboratively, they have written on the article like on digital vector. So this is where the multiplication authorship, because you know, in UGC, you have that one that is 70% for the corresponding author for the first author and 30% for the subsequent authors or the other authors, co-authors. So obviously, they will be getting the marks there. So this is one thing, that is whenever you are rather company one individual, with the help of such type of things attached or the stigma. So obviously something is not coming. And publication bias, you know, some people are uh, very much clever and some researchers, they do know the characteristics of the journals who are rather uh, having uh, the uh, chance of or who are rather uh, having that one that is uh, the publication time is very less, and at the same time, the peer review process is a bit uh, like that, not uh, very strict. So, they can go for that one. Citation obsession. The more citations are there, so many of the journals are there, or rather, many of the authors are also there. So, they actually go for such kind of thing that is, they are not including citations, only those what they have consulted, but they are including the citations there. 
which are not being consulted just to enrich the quality of the, just to show that one, the write-up is rather happy, very good quality. And the last one, that one, that the research integrity, that is where the research integrity is compromised. So this culture of public publisher perish is clearly purpose. And you see, as long as there is no transparency, both authorship and the article, and this one, so the, and if you threaten researcher, that is, only measure your intellect only with the publication, such type of things will be there because it is nothing but some kind of uh, the survival of the fittest or other, this some kind of thing that we want to survive. Now, we are going to the second one. Now, see who are the stakeholders. So, who are with this? Activities who are rather with this business of this research metrics. So we have the academic stakeholders like we, the people, and then individuals, then institutions, organizations. Right now, you see the institutions, UGC has already mandated that one. When you the PhD thesis are to be submitted, they are must be uh, free from plagiarism, it should be checked with some data, some kind of software they already mentioned. Like you see, tournating, like um, say, a good or like that. So, this is what. So, you have to check that one whether all these things are whether qualitative one, whether they are um, perfectly fundamental or not. So, these things, so academic stakeholders are also there. Now, societal stakeholders, that is whether your knowledge is application. So, same type of knowledge is either coming or not, and what the how the society is either getting benefited from the academic endeavors or academic input one individual is rather giving to the society. And the last one is the commercial stakeholders. The commercial stakeholders, the vendors who are aggregators, who are actually keeping all these resources together for the benefit of the social development as well as their own development. I must not deny that way. So, these are rather the aspects. So we have to cut all these four. And you know that when many of the commercial stakeholders, they are like web of science and other fellows, they are uh, having um, the, all the things living if you want to even if you want to check uh, impact factor or the C that is your H index, you may have to take the help of them by paying fees or like that. So this is what stakeholders are there. Now, the communication in research is rather coming with the two things. One is with the academia itself. Uh, that is, we can go for that one, like what I am right now doing, that is the presentations and seminars, and the funding and ethics of application, academic books, journal articles, term papers, essays, makings, correspondence. So these are with the academia, with the academia. We are actually going for the Communicating. So, in research, we do communicate with the different types of words and it's with the society, speaking at the public, you should general praise, social media, blogs. So, these are the different communication in research because when it's not only, it's not only restricted to publication of journals or publication of articles in journals. So, we are rather doing a lot of things for one individual in wins in academics, they are rather doing all such things. Now you see perspective of impacts whenever we have talked about this. So we have the academic impact. So journal impact factors, the site citation counts, these are the traditional things that we do have the social impact factors also, the download counts page views, mentions, mention in social media. This is what the new thing that is what so actually what we are talking about is the first one that is academic impact, the journal by impact of the certificate counts. So these are the things. And recently whenever we have seen that one, this type of impact is not very much worthy to measure the full integrity of one individual who is living with academics. So we are rather trying to apply that one as a social impact and ultimately this academic and social impact both together. This is giving some bit of edge 
to that particular person who is giving or who is contributing to his own domain. Now, now here are the metrics, traditional bibliometrics we have. And you see regarding bibliometrics, we do have that three laws, the Jeeves law, that was law of class law, where we try to measure the scientific productivity, then journals, effectivity of the journals. So all these things we try to analyze that one. In the traditional way, all the Lodkas and that course, they actually covered a very limited amount of in samples, uh, I can't say that the population was there, but from the population itself, the, their sample size was very small. So, in traditional bibliometrics, right now we are actually um, say, seeing that one, a lot of problems are there, and obviously new things have already come. And emerging trends of alternatives that is based on specifically on online tools. Now, why we do this? As you see, we do this one because the quantifiable measure. So, one thing here that is most important thing, whatever I say here, that is your, about your quality or like that, actually the problem with the recorded knowledge is that, recorded knowledge or rather we do not have any kind of such capturing machine by which we can capture the tacit or intellect of individual without having a footprint in any kind of, without a recorded form. And once the recorded form is there, that is always quantified. And that is what the first thing is that makes this is a quantified research model. And differentiating the articles, journals, authors, and obviously imperfect calculations, the fuzzy concept. That is what, imperfect calculation, the fuzzy concept, fuzzy concept is uh, the concepts which uh, are there, but it's not recorded, but at the same time you have to take that one, that is, uh, you have to take the note of it, okay. Uh, now what are the different metrics right now we have? So we have the scholarly outputs and we have the salutation counts, we have the different formulas and we can assess the journal impact factors and we have that one, the very basic thing is the journal impact factor. Then we have the H index, we have the G index, we, we have that one, the Eugen factor score and the model metric. So these are the traditional form of metrics, so not all of metrics, but not the last one, but the first four, these were rather actually on the recorded knowledge. I am not saying that when the last one is not recorded, it is also recorded, but this is some type of thing that is not a, only restricted to the print media. But the first four is rather restricted to the print media and through which we actually try to count that is whether a journal, whether actual thing is that we are not actually counting the journal or the container or like that. We are trying to assess the, uh, we are trying to assess the intellectual level or rather the societal contribution of the individual who is a forerunner in his own discipline with his intellect. That is what we actually try to measure. So, we are going for that one. So, that is what are the models. We have the academic output models. Now, so you see, academic output, academic output model is rather this one, that the journals and all other things. So, how we go for that one, that is, what are the different types of uh, hosts, what are the different types of codes where we are or rather we or rather one academician is publishing his or her documents. Then we have the person centered model. Person centered model is what? Person centered model is nothing but that model where one individual is how one individual is relevant to his own discipline, like that of what we do in our H index. Then four quadrant model, you know that one that is actually if you say that one. There is a fourth quadrant where the author, where the publisher, where the uh, publication and where the users, they are there. And the lastly, the pragmatic model understands that actually that is what the model where we are actually covering everything of the individual. That is whatever the form, 
different forms of communication is considered. And you see, for measuring, that is the article impact, you know, that is we are going for that one, that is the uh, citation count. Then we have the journal impact, the journal data and standard measures for journal. And we go for the author impact, that is the citation measure of one individual, that is uh, how many citations or rather the whatever is producing, how many of it is giving you the relevance of the person to the discipline and all the metrics are there and book and book chapter impact is a rather uh, for those things where uh, we are doing some research on the historical one or the other this one and the maximizing impact that is how one individual can maximize. Now see we have that one the rest, retros, retrospective measure that is the back to first narrow measure that is for individual confined by what is index as citation. We can't compare between disciplines. So each and every discipline is different. So obviously other issues are like that. Language, quotation, these are appropriate article citation, description, article citation. These are things. So once upon a time, whenever we did bibliometrics, we tried to identify the couplings, bibliographic coupling, we try to identify uh, different types of self-citation, co-citation, and clustering, mapping and you know that one, ranking of the uh, um, authors, ranking of the countries, ranking of the journals. So this was actually from the citation count. We try to measure that one, that is, who is the most prolific one. And you know, many, for many times, that is, Professor Regine Garfield was actually the person who ranked top, at the top of that link, that is the most prolific author, productive author is Regine Garfield, specifically taking almost all of it. So after that, so we got that one, the country is like, so from the citation count, we got that. That is, which country is giving us too much of resources for our own domain. But, uh, it's, by that time only the recorded one, that is the write-ups were there, or the writings or the articles were being published with that particular, with our journals. It's not like that, how you are rather reciprocating, that was not being considered, or that was not being considered. So at the same time, you cannot compare your discipline with the other disciplines because uh, like when information science is still considered as actually the humanities or social sciences and like that. So but you see regarding other social science subjects, this particular subject is has some bit of differentiation because here the some areas are rather blurred, blurred in what sense? Uh, many topics of the science are rather integrated, diffused in this subject, and that's all why this particular subject, that is there is a blurred line between science and social science in this subject. Mm -hmm. So obviously this measurement, whenever we are going for measuring this one, this also we have to consider. And you see regarding traditional metrics, we do have the first one, that is the impact factor, the journals and journal accounts. So impact factor, this one is rather actually one kind of a very traditional measurement and it was always actually counted like that one, that is the issue of rather counting the impact factor of the journal of the present year, you have to count that one, count the past two years, total item pass, item published, and actually in 2000, I'll see the one example is there. The like total number issue, I want to count some impact factor of the journal in 2020. Then you have to take that one 2019 and 2018 is two. That is how many items were published and number of items published in 2018 and 2019 and 2018 sum it up and divide that one by the stated items as well as the number of items. So by this way you get that one, that's the impact factor. So more about the impact factor, you uh, can see this one, this is what I will make this one for you. That is you see, you can go over the general citation report for getting impact factor. This is nothing but a two-year period to divide the number of times of articles were set by the number of articles that were published. Example is given here. Suppose 200 is the number of articles published in one year and the other year. That is two corresponding previous years. 
and was cited by the index journals in 2010. That is, this should be cited, cited by one actually the index journals. Okay. So obviously you just count that one. But if 23 is the total number of citable articles published in 2008 or 9 for your example. So the total number of articles published divided by that, the total number of uh, articles cited by the index journals on that two years. So that is what the impact factor is. So impact factor is for the journal. Impact factor is not the author level metrics, it's the journal metrics. Journal metrics in what sense? That is what if here yeah, a lot of things are there. A lot of things are there. You see, in impact factor, what the problem is that is if you publish a lot, if you publish a lot in the previous year and the year before the previous year, so but still if your journal is not cited by any of the index journal, so your impact factor will not increase anyway. So obviously first and foremost thing is that you have to go for that one, that is you have to enlist your journal in the index journal, right? There's an index journals like CEO of Science or rather the Science student or rather the, you see, the Scopus. So you have to get that one. So otherwise there is no. And regarding UGC, you see UGC right now not taking the factor of any other agencies but Thompson will not. Now what is, one, who is this Thompson and Ryder or what? What is this? This Thompson and Ryder is nothing but the company or rather the organization called by Eugene Derfield himself, which is producing the science citation index and social science citation index and the clarity analysis right now they are calling. So obviously, and this is a paint service, you cannot have the access of that one. Even if you want to get your impact factor of the journal, if you want to get that impact factor of the journal, the Thomson writer, you have to take the help of one library which is subscribing uh, this one, that is the Thomson writers, or rather you don't have any other way for that. So other impact factors are not being considered at all. And you can say that one, why? My view, this is obviously the Thompson Writer is a global company, and you can say that one. Once upon a time, they published one software, also Eugene wrote on software, HIST site, H I S T C I T, his site for calculating these citations like H index or other, all this impact data from Web of Science data. But you know, Web of Science data is not accessible freely. And here comes the problem that is whenever you have to identify the impact factor, you have to take the help of one institution where this way of science substitution is there. Individual is too much price for price you have to And then uh, that comes the H index. Uh, H index is one thing. H index is one thing. H index on the contrary. It is actually nothing but the extension of uh, impact factor uh, or uh, you can say that one is a bit just um, some bit of extension of impact factor. So in case of H index, this is uh, rather you can say that one it is actually the author centric uh, impact, the scholars impact rather than to the journal. In this case, what we usually do, that is nothing but uh, we are actually putting the number of articles or publications of one individual author in the descending order and based on the number of times stated. And obviously, uh, you can say that on how many times one of your paper has been cited, and these are rather actually published or these are rather arranged according to a descending order. And obviously, we usually see that one where the number of cited uh, publication or the number of times a publication has been cited is equal or larger than um, a paper that is actually the number, H index. 
Here, if you see the example, you will see that also paper number is cited for 13 times, paper number 2 is cited for 7 times, and paper number 3 is cited for 4 times. So, actually, here you will see that one that is a figure that points that one that is cited equal or larger than the line that is 3 and 4. So, that is what the paper number that is H index is 3. So, the number of citation that is a 2. So, please remember that. Many data is that will give you this number, or rather, you can often find that one uh, by calculating that one through A, or rather, you can calculate that one by using a specific formula. So, H index is rather focused on scholars instead of entire journal. The more H index you have, the more productivity of you will be visible uh, in. The metrics or rather can consider that one you are much more prolific in your field. So next we are getting that one the Google index that is a G index and you know that one that is urging and urging publisher page and it is rather giving us this G index. This is nothing but uh, it is a continuation of H index you can say that one it is Instead of this, while we are actually going for the H index, that is the lowest actually the value. And in G index, we are rather going for that one, the highly cited citations. That is the list of articles in descending order, the citation that you see, the G index, the largest unique number to the extent that the top G articles received to that. That is at least G squares of citation. G squares. And that is what that the top G article. Suppose you are actually making a list, and suppose one article is actually getting the third article of nine citations. So you can say that from this the G index, at least G square. So this is what the G index is. And regarding G index, Google index, so you can calculate that one by using publisher Paris POP software, and it is available uh, from uh, Zing's own website and a very recent edition is having a lot of resources like Google Scholar, then you see uh, the site share and other things and the page is uh, or rather the subscription based ones is uh, scopes as well as you see, the web of science and Microsoft Academics. These are the subscription based you require the API key for that. So by this way you can calculate the G. Now see Agent Factor score. This is available from Agent Factor. This score can be calculated by using Agent Factor. So this is just like uh, similar of uh, that is impact factor, and they are also pulling their data from JCH sources and journal citation report. You know, there's a major difference. Is that why is the difference? Differences that is in fact delays references from one article in a journal to another in the same journal. That is what the problem of self citation. This is actually removed and wherever and it is calculated under the year of five years calculation, not under two years calculation as calculated in impact factor. So this is what the agent factor. Again, how agent factor you are actually going for that one that is the same thing like impact factor but what we are actually doing here that is we delete the references from one article in a journal one article in a journal to another in the same journal right? to another in the same journal by this way we eliminate that one so this eliminates the problem of self -sight. and here it is considered as a five years plan or rather five years based calculation and the high agent factor you know, score signal the journal doesn't self cite and controls the network and is So it is useful. The scholars H index as well as this factors are now published in order to the broad assets of their impact. So this is what the scores are. And so there is another index we got that on I10 index here that is at least uh, a number of so, so Google Scholar seems this one using this one. That is the publication, the number of persons at least 10 times. You have to, that means what 10 times counted as one. So, obviously, this is the I10 index. As you can say that only if your one particular article has been cited for 40 times, that is your item score. 4, that is what 
IT indexes. And now you see the journal evaluation resources. You have that one. The first one, the journal databases for evaluation, and we have the Google uh, Scholar metrics. Here you are seeing the picture, and you have that one. Uh, SCI Margo, the Sky Margo Journal and Country Time, then we have Skyrim. So you can get the journal impact here. That is, you can see that also for the first one, you see we have that one analysis of the international studies. You go there, you go there. Uh, that is Sky Margo, and you can get that result. That is SG. And in Science Rev also, you get that one you know, site, or that is, you can search there. And in Google Scholar, she also you can search that well. And you see this general citation report, the JCR, and this is the example of region factor of, and that is a, you know, that one, that is a population studies center, that is a social science uh, journal information And see, when we are going for the citation analysis, most of the cases for the citation analysis, we try to get the impact. Or assume the quality of the article based on the number of the publications that have been cited by others. Citation analysis. So, in citation analysis, the reference council. In citation analysis, we try to then do, identify that one whether a particular author has been cited by other authors. The more times they were cited, it is actually considered the validity of that particular article is still is relevant. Or validity of the article or relevancy of the articles still there in the society or still in the academic discipline. So for example, you see, once upon a time we studied that one, that is the half-life of um, literature and we studied that on the obsolescence of literature. And each and every subject has their own obsolescence and all have their own half-life period. So most of the cases, these journal articles and obviously these um, or whatever it may be, you can say that one, this output, academic output, they have their own half life. And citation analysis is actually a kind of thing in which you see the other websites to identify that one, whether a particular journal is rather the cited beyond of his half life or rather beyond his option. So, or rather, where is there is the graph is some kind of thing that is whether these things are still relevant or not. Whatever was valid um, in previous times and whether this is still valid in recent times. So if we see that one, one particular item was valid in 70s and still it is rather been used in 90s or 2021, so this 2010 or 2010 onwards, the decade of 2010. So you can say that one, that some bit of relevance is still there. And obviously you know that one, the, how many times uh, the scholarly work has been cited and who is citing this specific work, track the specific scholar, identify the seminal works that are frequently cited, seminal level, the similar kind of having the same lens of that one and determine determination of the trend of research. Because you see in the library information science trade, we have seen that one several times. The different types of trust areas were there. So once upon a time people were actually dealing with lot more like the yeah, public libraries, then we got that one, the academic library. And then we have seen that one, some of the articles and the, like that, see the computer application in these. Then we got that one, the, uh, you see, the digital library, then from the uh, other authors, so you the cloud computing, and right now the data mining, bibliometrics play a big role over there. Many people do several citation analysis based on the journals or even uh, the recitation study and specifically some bit of citation study is still being carried out on the way well metrics. So those things were there. So trust area is there and almost you can determine this type of trust area or rather whenever you actually see the literary warrant that are being published on a particular subject. Now, uh, measuring impact of books here. So, although in case of uh, the citation analysis, or no, sorry, in case of this metrics calculation, we didn't pay that much of interest on the books, but you see, for the historical research, or rather the research for the anthropological studies, or rather tracing the human evaluation. So, in such cases, in such cases, many times we may require that one that is the books 
that is other than the journal articles or other <coughs> book citation crowds. Then uh, library holdings, then book reviews, all these other quality other indicators. And lastly, we actually came to this one that is the alt matrix. The term alt matrix is used to describe the different approaches. So now see where the problem is, what is the cause of the work of alt matrix. That is why communication, if we say communication, communication is rather you know that when people started writing fast than that of saying something. That is actually, you see, the drawing became fast than that of writing and script. Scripts came much more in latter stages. Now, obviously, human communication, once upon a time, whenever the script was not there, human communication was much more, that is actually, instead of verbal, that was a non-verbal way. That is a gesture, like drawing pictures, nodding something, saying yes or no, non-conventional forms of communication. And whenever the ICT, this particular thing came, and day by the day we will be seeing that, we have seen that one, the area of knowledge dissemination, the reading of knowledge dissemination is rather being increased. In that time, we have seen that when the academicians or the academics, they started uh, to represent them in the academic discipline, not only just by uh, giving their results or giving their output in the form of articles, but also in some cases in some alternate forms, in some unorthodox forms. So this is like bookmarking something, linking, blogging, posting, and you see the citation management, and you see, I see, tweeting, so all these things. So, obviously, what is that? One particular fellow who is not very much uh, prolific in the pain just for this one, that is what, for the articles or like that. But you might see him or her is totally active in the social media or network or the social media platform or the network platform where interaction and uh, sudden into it or the spark of his or her brains being seen while in the comments he is posting on the Facebook, on the Twitter or any other social form and if you do not consider that one you cannot actually get that one because this type of knowledge dissemination is rather very temporary and this is a, although temporary but this type of knowledge dissemination is much more uh, non-speculative or rather instant in nature. And once this type of deliberation is instant in nature, so if you sketch this one, if you can hold this one with you, then you can identify that is what are the real uh, intellectual output of that individual. Instead of writing something or rather making something with the help of some twisted words, or uh, just paraphrasing the sentences and just writing something which is already there and just making the knowledge domain uh, with overload of information, they are rather uh, giving much more information or rather you can say that a spark in the domain so that others can carry it out or others can tag it in their own study and much further. This is what was the basis of Altmetrics and we started with that one, the Altmetrics. And so, there is a new way of measuring that one, non-traditional form of impact. And not only using citations, not deliberately, or that is not those two, only using citations, not alternatives to citations, and complementary to the traditional citation. This is not the same that one that is a traditional citation where citation based analysis or rather these are rather redundant. Is saying that one, this is rather supplementary. So that is whenever you are counting that one, at the same time you better count these things too. And once you are count, counting the thing, so it will give you a kind of holistic idea that is about the academic output, research output. So ultimately we also refer to any metrics. So that is actually including all metrics. So it is rather for the surrounding the total scholarly environment. This is 
sees. And you see this is the online attention or the journal articles and data sets. Here comes the very concept of that one. Right now you see a lot of people are there. So right now they are doing their research and specifically when they are going to the field and they are collecting the data and that data being unique data and obviously this data might be might have the potential that is only what the researchers is doing with data that data may not be uh, actually doing the good justice with that data now if you grab all this data that is actually the segregated data from each and every area and if you grab all this data together the agglomerated, agglomerated data will actually create some bit of big data or rather this agglomerated data can give you better decision making policy or can he help you to go for better decision making framing the policy for better decision making and obviously those who are rather uh, submitting this raw data they are also doing something new and this is also something just like a contribution in the subject domain so this is what these elements the data sets that's for example if anyone is using uh, regarding the library and the innovative services in the library and whenever they are covering a particular area and identifying the innovative services and recording that one that data either in excel form or in a csv form or rather in xml form or rather in any form whenever they are keeping that one and they are uploading that one in some free data sites or other free free data hosts from where anyone can download that one so like open Gov in our India we do have that one and a lot of such data repositories are there. This will ultimately help other researchers. The pool of researchers, that is the crowds, researchers, that is the, of the whole, whole the crowd of research fraternity. So they will have the benefit of using that data and that is one will help the entrepreneurs. And obviously collection of deliver article metrics with the journal publications. And you see, this is the article level, individual one, such as we did that one, journal level, author level, and institution level. We can do all these things in steps. And, and you see the ultimate talk metrics, these are coming from all these things, the research getting in that one, the academician is also there, Twitter, Goodreads, Facebook, GitHub, Amazon, Mendeley, and mention not there other things are also there so even you can go for the twitter you can go for the facebook pages the likes the comments of the users the social tagging all these things can be uh, used for automatics or rather counting the alternative ways of referencing alternative ways of uh, users or rather researchers impact now how do we usually connect all these things so we Collect, we can collect that one directly from the individuals, we can collect that one from the publishers, we can collect that one from library databases that are already there, you know that one, and the scholarly networks. In scholarly networks, like you say, the research care, I mean, academy, CIDU. Now in Facebook, although the Facebook is not actually the social network in that sense, the truly academic social network is not like that. But still, the social, uh, in Facebook, the concept of pages, and this page, and the groups the joining in a particular group this can give you some bit of um, resources regarding individuals having their insights in their those pages and aggregated aggregating tools by which the discovery tools are like that and see the slide shares plus web of science so research get metrics all these metrics are there from which we can collect all this data and now in fact, you know, inherently fuzzy and subject. But what's there? That is, all these data, these are inherently fuzzy and subject because you see this impact. So, when it, here some catch, catches, catches are there means, so whenever you are writing one article, so you have a focus, you are saying something, you are saying something, you are making one abstract, at the same time you have the introduction and throughout the journals, it is rather going from something to complex, a kind of strategic scientific approach is there, and lastly, ultimately, you are rather concluding that one along with your observations and that one, and you have a reference. So, here we are getting a structured 
bullet of information presentation and where we can highlight that one what the researcher is trying to say what the academician is trying to say that is already there either in the conclusion or rather in the abstract and in the body he narrated that but when we are capturing that thing that is some sentiment analysis you see right now people are talking about sentiment analysis people are we are talking about the data carpentry we are talking about social carpentry data carpentry emotional intelligence and social intelligence all these things are inherently you see that one is a quasi in nature so that is when you are so this actually when we suppose you were saying something and one is not believing that one and he is putting one smile yes sarcasm and this sarcasm may not give the real meaning of what he wants to intend what he intends to say rather it becomes some bit of fuzzy and subjective and attention is either this particular one is rather given truly being attentive or rather it is a kind of thing like a kind of you know, going to shopping like attitude or foraging approach just you came and just gave that so when you are engaged this one or so not with this thing that is actually this matrix or that particular perspective for which you are writing some comments or that so something is can be correlated with the video matrix something you can know something you can measure something you can not it's like this. so it's not even like that you are like a scale can measure so anyway you are saying that one so you see the problem is uh when we were seeing that one so many people the leaders who were the social network do not participate of their own those were the leaders so they usually we were many people are having the tendency of just putting pressing the like button for each and everything for each and every one they just put that one like so by this way this is their attention is not focused and their engagement is not true they are not going through it properly so you can collect that data the geometry with how many likes but it doesn't necessarily give you the subjective meaning of it and you see we have that one that is the cakes download so on methods are there social media that is like shares and it's actually impact of great literature and not formally published posters working papers they are also there and it is unlikely that some alternate chicks will supplement it supplement the traditional metrics as a measure of itself However, our practices can demonstrate the reach and interest of topic on public practices and policies. Author should refrain from judging the impact of the work based on objects. Not only this, digging into who is saying about what may work, the more it will have an impact on the influence of the work. So here the problem is that many times that I already told you that the fuzziness is there. The, you can say that one the authenticity or rather the authoritativeness what we use for the evaluation of the students so these are not there although you are actually trying to evaluate that one and many times when you are trying to evaluate this not giving you the proper meaning of it and strategies what are the strategies by which you can maximize your impact that is you have may have to create the unique research identifiers you can just create a research profile you can share your research online and you can take steps to broaden your impact then and so you can act you can add post prints white papers jars so any kind of online repositories obviously the repositories which are having a reputation like that of edu or in or ac in like that craft it that is craft work title abstract everything so that it can and it can attract others okay and then publish in open access journals or even there is a you can go for the gold rule or you can go for the green rule by gold rule so green rule by green rule also it's not like that so green rule is either going for that one that is open access but gold rule is directly to the open access and linking that one the linking the most of the research with the email signatures discuss your research findings with the blogs peer groups team tweeters and contribute your ideas to different channels by which your identity can be visible or your identity can be visible i am see you can go for that one that is a google scholar profile you can go for the google scholar profile 
you can do in the impact story, you can share your research impact story, there's all kinds of truth, share your resource online, you can go for the post treatment and presentation slides, videos like YouTube, Vimeo, data sets, and code and software you can take and for GTAs, search for the name and these places. So that is whatever you are doing. So try to publish that one in authoritative domain so that people can identify your why your uniqueness in the domain. And you can go for the researcher ID that is a freely available uh, resource for that one that is called the research community. So if you go for that one, you will be assigned to an individual ID. You know that one, I know it is very well, that is you are already burdened with a lot of IDs, like your uh, government IDs or other things, but this is another ID only for your uh, academic visibility or so that is academic presentability. And this ID is such an ID, you can go to the online profile, you can request that one all of knowledge for researcher ID or rather your researcher ID.com and you go there and this researcher ID will help you to identify others who you are just by the ID itself as because it will actually if you keep everything under this uh, giving the research ID then anyone can pull that particular data from anywhere so almost all the times you have not to be too much vocal about your work and about your activities. I like seeing you know, there is also the open research and contributor and contributor ID. So open non profit ID that is also possible and it is also given the unique research and identifier and trans transparent method of linking. And this across the discipline, you can go for that one. It's a hub that connects researchers and research through embed or hosting. Identifiers and keywords, research profile, maintenance, master sub subscription. So specifically, these are the IDs which is your identity as one academician. You go for that one. These are, this will help you to be much more uh, visible much more seen in the academic domain. As for example, you know, okay, so right now you say, apart from these things, so, uh, and the last one, what I am saying you, this is what uh, a time in 2013 is taken from Kura. Uh, one fellow is actually saying that one, that is, uh, long things are there, so actually what I am trying to say, this is the important thing, that is why there is something kind of wrong with this. Nobody, the old motto that is actually said that nobody is written and everybody is writing seems to have more. And here the word is actually saying that attempt to linearize research patterns based on very simple pattern. Okay, and what is important, non impact factor, neither citation nor H index. Uniformity of money and it cannot replace careful reading. And publications are optimized according to the minimal content, and that is what we do researchers really need a simplicity. And my citation is 26, but recently is good enough. I do not know. So, that is actually this research. So, this is what, what I am trying to say. This is so that is what is popular there. Not this one. And these are the references I consulted for this presentation. And the question and answer session. I'm very much happy if you ask me regarding this one after this presentation. Thank you.